Now, whenever you think about the NFL, uh, you think about, you know, the San Francisco 49ers being a team that has been loaded for the last, uh, what, handful of years, yeah. five, six yeah. years, expected to win a Super Bowl every single time. Numerous different quarterbacks have played quarterback mm -hmm. for the San Francisco 49ers team. They've tried to figure out who's the right trigger man to get them over the hump to go. Jed York, owner of the San Francisco 49ers, actually chit-chat about Kyle Shanahan's thoughts about Brock Purdy week one into training camp. And first of all, had no idea this is what this human looked like. Mm -mm. Had no idea mm. this is what he sounded like. And this story completely debunks seemingly what Peter King was trying to put off into the media just yesterday. I said his, his honesty, his directness, you know, I mean, we haven't really, really talked much about Brock, but I mean, that's a, that's a good example of Kyle's directness. You know, last year in, in preseason, I think week one of training camp, which you have a, a quarterback that we're paying, I think, $20 million to. You have a guy that you drafted with investing three first round picks into, and he grabs me after practice. He's like, hey, hey man, we, we, we got to talk. And that's generally not a good thing when your coach <laughs> tells you we got to talk. <laughs> like, all right, what's up? And he's like, uh, I think our third string quarterback's our best quarterback. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what does that mean? He's like, well, he's like, obviously, like, We've invested in Trey. Like Trey's doing a good job. Like we're going to do everything that we can. We're not going to change that. We're, and we're not going to change the chart, <laughs> sure. the depth chart. But like, I, I, I think Brock will end up being our quarterback at some point. And like he didn't force it. Right? You had two injuries, and that's how Brock ended up playing. But he's he's always honest, even if it's not like one thing that owners don't love to hear when they've invested money and or draft picks or both into people that. The last pick in the draft is the guy that we think is the best. That's that's, that's generally not great news, um, but but he's honest and he let it play out the right way. You know, Brock. I think ironically, I think his first game was against the Chiefs, and he, he had some mop up time. And I, Brock, I think he threw one ball into the stands, and you know. I may or may not have had some sarcastic <laughs> comments for, for Kyle post game, um, but when Brock took over last year, like I think we had a calm about us. But there was a sense that like nothing catches you by surprise. And, and again, like you you might not love everything that Kyle tells you, but he's always open and honest, especially in the moment. And he's very clear about that with me. It's like, look, I will tell you exactly what I think of a player, a situation, a coach in the moment. But that might not be how I feel three weeks from now. So don't hold me to this is what I said about somebody in training camp when we're in week six of the season. Like, ask me in the moment what, what you want to ask about whoever, and I'll, I'll give you my open and honest opinion. And again, you might not always love what he says, but I, I've, I've been around enough people in this league to know that you don't always get a straight comment from, from people in those positions, and, and Kyle will always shoot you straight. For, for that point. people lying, says mm -hmm. Jed York, owner of the Niners. Did any of us know that's what that guy looked like? No. no. I had no clue. Allegedly, he's from Youngstown, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Shout out to all the Paisanos in Youngstown, obviously the Penguins and everything like that. I did not know that was the owner. Well, how did this dude end up the owner? Very cool. Like, Oh, yeah. The way he talked there, loved it. Mm -hmm. The story he told, the way he delivered the story, the way he also, had, you know, was like, yeah, not great whenever you hear, hey, you're paying like $100 million to this particular guy. I don't think he's the one. Yeah. Uh, you traded three basic first rounders for yep. this guy. Uh, I don't think he's the one. Well, so what are you geniuses in charge for? He's a, a potential owner mm -hmm. thought. Uh, the third string is the guy. And I like the fact just rolled with it. He's like, all right, well, hey, if that's the case, let's go ahead and do this. Having complete faith in the people that you put into positions of power and then them showing up for you. First of all, it has to feel good for Shanahan, who was on the record last week saying, I'll see you on stage, man, mm -hmm. to John Lynch. Sweet. And then it happening. And then him telling Jed York, the owner, first week of training camp, like, our third string guy is the guy in this whole thing. Shanahan's got a big brain, but also shout out to Jed York being seemingly a very reachable, active owner and handling it all perfectly. And who the hell is it? Did we know that was the, he owns the team? That's so he is the acting CEO right now. I believe his mom owns 90% of the team. His uncle, Eddie DeBartolo, who is his mom's brother, used to be the owner. And then I don't know if it was like some – legal issues or something, but she came in and she got 90% ownership of the team, which she still has 
and he's the acting CEO. I assume you know you assume that he's going to be kind of the next one. But there was a uh, I was reading there was a story going around that like when he first became the CEO, Niner started zero and five, and I think he's told someone in the media like we're going to rip off. 10 straight wins or something like that and go to the playoffs and everyone kind of shit on him like hey this nepotism kid like the only reason he's in this business is because of his uncle and because of his mom like doesn't really get it doesn't understand they didn't make the playoffs but I think they they won like nine of their last 10 games or something like that and he started to get a little bit more respect around the building and everything and yeah I'd never heard him talk before I don't think so definitely didn't know that's what he looked like but that that's a really cool clip and it seems like you know he he obviously knows what he's doing. Like they trust Shanahan completely, and it doesn't seem like he's one of these owners or people in charge who wants it to be known. Like, hey, this is my team. You know, like he's letting Shanahan do his thing and kind of just trusting him and believing in his vision. And I would like to let everybody know: certainly a product of nepotism. Like, Absolutely, sure. everything Absolutely. they said about him. Certainly, that's not his fault, though. No, no. no. You know, it's not, at least you know, there's we've seen it before where products of nepotism feel as if they've earned the right and they have an obliviousness to them and a lack of self-awareness and a lack of talent normally and drive and uh, everything that you would expect or hope for people in positions that they get handed to. But like him, he understands, I assume, that he, yeah, I mean, my mom's Mm -hmm. brother, I end up being a CEO of a team. There's only 32 of these. This is a dream for everybody. To remain a human, seemingly, yeah. is phenomenal. And then for the success that they're having with the way it's being operated, good for him, good for them. Good for mom, good for son, good for family, good for team. Yeah, good for all of them. And for, but the uh, I, I enjoyed the nice little look behind the scenes where Kyle's like, you know what? Listen, we got 20 in Jimmy. Uh, we got three first-rounders um, in, the, in a first-round draft pick. Um, the third guy's... He's the best. I'm not gonna change. I'm not gonna. We're change not gonna it. ruffle any feathers. Listen, I'm yeah. not gonna change the depth chart. Okay. I just, I just gotta let you know. Okay. Like I assume there's, I assume that happens a lot in the NFL where there's someone uh, further down the uh, draft board who is better, who they don't immediately get the shot because of what has been invested in players in front of them. So that kind of goes back to the conversation about Brock Purdy about how, like I said last week, whenever I was going into second year, this dude was handed nothing. Like, this mm-hmm. dude, as the last pick of the draft, you are promised nothing. Now, whereas his family successful? I'm not talking about life. I'm talking about in football. I'm talking you have two or three bad training camp practices. You aren't able to hit either the scout team or maybe what they want you to throw on the defensive side. They'll find some other arm for you because yeah. you're a seventh rounder. You're, there's not a lot of money invested in you. So he's literally had to earn every single step of the way. And to your point, yeah, there's a lot of other positions where it takes place as well. You just hope... Yeah. That the football gods, because it is a um, a meritocracy, mm-hmm. professional athletics. Yep. I feel like it is a meritocracy. Mm-hmm. It's one of the final ones on earth that, almost, yeah. where you actually have to earn your spot or you'll get exposed. There's been a lot of stories about guys who've been drafted late. I mean, Tom Brady the other day was on. I mean, we're about to have a third rounder on uh, mm-hmm. joining us who ended up on the Mount Rushmore as well, where you outperform. And it feels like in professional athletics, there's no real ceiling that can hold you. If you have talent and you have a work ethic and you go about doing things the right way, you can find mm-hmm. your way to the top. It's beautiful. Brock Purdy has done that. 